summer. Um, we'll start with public participation. Do we have any comments? Um, I can't see I'm so I'm going by who's ever there to tell me. <laughs> uh, there's no one from the public here, except for uh, WCTV. All right. When seeing no one present, we will move on to item number three, which is the minutes of the meeting vote. And what I'd like to do is just see if there are any uh, questions or changes to both sets of minutes and we'll vote on both at one time. So we'll start with uh, the November 8th meeting, which was the district school action plan meeting. Um, any questions about those minutes or any changes that anyone would like to suggest? In this minute, because of that, that it could start World War III. I'm going to take that as none. And so then we'll move on to the November 10th meeting, which was our budget workshop. Does anyone have any changes or questions regarding those minutes? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to accept both sets of minutes for November 8th and November 10th, 2022. Second. All right, we'll do a roll call vote uh, once again. Uh, Jeff? Yes. Joyce? Yes. April? I'm going to abstain as I was not at either of those. Okay. Um, myself, yes. And I'm assuming Brennan is not here yet. So it would be 301. Or three? Yeah, 01. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to item number four the district calendar. Um, and Dr. Dandridge, do you want to explain the changes in that? Thank you. Um, so good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the calendar that was last approved by the school committee had March 8th as a full day professional development day. Um, and we have since learned that that will be a MCAS high school retake day for math. It's not a day that there's any flexibility with the state. We have to give the retake on that day. So we um, would like to move that day from the 8th, the all day professional development day to the 15th of March. Um, this has been reviewed and approved by the administrative team and um, reviewed and approved by the union. And um, I'm asking tonight for the school committee to approve um, that change. And if you do, we will get this out to families tomorrow. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any Julia questions? Caesar, Julia Caesar might be a little upset, but that's okay. <laughs> beware, beware. All right. Uh, once again, we'll do a roll call vote then. Uh, Jeff? Yes. Joyce? Yes. April? Yes. Myself, yes. And Brennan, not present. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, we'll move on to the district uh, uh, director of finance report and the budget transfer information. Good evening. Uh, tonight I have about the final budget transfer, one of the final budget transfers for FY23 for you. And what we need to do with this transfer is to um, correct the deficits that occurred since our last meeting in the payroll. So it's some substitute accounts, some um, salary accounts, that, uh, and also the health insurance accounts for our active employees as part of the agreement between the school department and the town and the food service employee insurance. And what we're using to cover these is any um, expense accounts and salary accounts that have remaining available funds as of the end of the year. Any questions, Kristen? Jeff? Uh, so first of all, my compliments, it's quite a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, but um, I appreciate the work that went into doing this and I'm very happy. Is it fair to say that none of this, none of the, um, you, none of the, of the dollars that you're using to cover the deficits are coming from um, ESSER funds? No, no, none of them are coming from ESSER funds. This is all within the local school budget. Okay, 
Um, secondly, I was a little surprised to, at some of the accounts that were running deficits, meaning it, I, I know you didn't do the budget, um, but for, for there to be, um, are there, were there literally more teachers at Wetterham Elementary School than were budgeted? Were there literally more coaches that, than, that were budgeted? Um, that, that was somewhat of a surprise to me. So that I really can't um, address for this year since, as you said, I didn't do the budget, but I think it, you know, it's probably a combination of the various funds that were being used to balance the FY23 budget when it was being developed. So we had the ESSER 2 and the ESSER 3, the local funds, and then there looked like there had to have been some cuts um, toward the end to, to get everything to balance. So I think it's just the effect of how funds were used versus how they were budgeted. But you know, going back to your original question, we were able to maintain it within the local budget but um, going forward for next year, you know, I, I hope that we won't see these kinds of variations because, you know, what I did looking at the budget when I first started out back in September was to look at what the actual payroll was going through those accounts. And that's how those, those funds were budgeted for. So as long as there haven't been like big changes of people moving from building to building, or other shifts, we we should be a little bit more stable next year. Okay, um, my biggest concern is the three hundred and fifty thousand. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kevin or Matt. We have never actually voted to approve that that payment to the town. Is that a correct statement? That is correct. Okay, so. My, my feeling is that if we approve these transfers, we are essentially de facto approving that payment. Um, it may not be an official vote on that specific issue, but it seems like we are voting to make, for Kristen and Matt to make that $350,000 payment to the town. I'm very uncomfortable, not so much with the fact that maybe it could be justified, but I am I don't like the precedent that any superintendent can commit $350,000 to anybody without the approval uh, of the school committee. So I would at least like it in the minutes, Jamie, that at least this school committee member uh, does not believe that that payment should um, should have been committed um, without the approval of the school committee. That's number one. Number two, assuming that this um, payment of 350,000 is now being recommended by you, Matt, and if that's the case, I understand why you might choose to do that for a variety of reasons. Um, can you give us an update on where we stand for future payments on this? on this agreement? Yeah, um, we, um, so we have worked with Derek through the budget process and um, for next year, there will be uh, no payment. And so therefore- I'm sorry, you said for next year, there will be no payment on the insurance for active employees. Is that it? Was that, that what is, I just heard you say? That is correct. FY24. Um, would there will be no payment um, for health insurance? Okay. So, can we take that to mean that that agreement is now null and void after the first year? Yes. Okay. All right. So it's a one-time event. You know, you're recommending that we do it, um, and then then I'm prepared to. To vote in favor of these transfers, which would include the three hundred fifty thousand. Um, and, and if I may, please. Um, um, I agree with you one hundred percent, Mr. Sweat. Um, the superintendent. I I cannot commit money without, and I would not commit money without bringing it to the school committee first. 
Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And thank you, Kevin, for indulging me. No problem. Uh, Chris, and I had one question as well. Is it fair to say that if we didn't have the, uh, the budget freeze in October that we wouldn't be able to cover this deficit without going into ESSER funds potentially? I, I would say that that's pro that that is correct. That is correct. We were able to, because um, that that's a lot of money that's not budgeted for, right? Three hundred and fifty thousand. And sometimes you pick up funds along the way with um, people being hired less than someone left. But it's very difficult to pick up that that kind of that level of funding. So I think um, most definitely, you know, when the budget was frozen in the fall. It was frozen because we knew that we were facing some significant deficits at that time. And uh, that's that's where largely a lot of these funds are coming from is a lot of the expense accounts that were frozen. So it was, you know, I'm sure there were sacrifices that were made, um, but the um, principals and the staff were very um, helpful in, in being able to do this. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I do. Go ahead, April. Okay. Um, so just so that I understand, this is all one-time transfers. How are these going to affect knowing that these uh, transfers needed to occur for salary um, coverage? How are, is that going to affect the, the, the budget that we've already voted on for the following year? It, it won't, these won't affect it because um, we start a new, a new day, July 1. Um, and so we have a new budget for, for all of the salary accounts, all of the expense accounts. So um, this budget ended as of, ends as of June 30th. So right now we're just doing the year end adjusting entries. So all of the adjustments were noted that they had to be made for the forthcoming budget so that we hopefully don't yeah. have this so, issue. Okay. Things that we knew of in the fall, um, you know, doing the budget in October, November, December, things that we were aware of, we certainly took steps to correct it in next year's budget. So I'm not going to okay. say everything's been corrected because of the, there may have been things that came up, you know, in, in the springtime that now we have better information. So you just keep, you just keep improving on the, you know, on the information you have at the time. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So do I have a motion to accept the transfer? So moved. Second. All right, roll call. Jeff? Yes. Choice? Yes. April? Yes. Myself? Yes. And uh, uh, Brennan, I assume, is still not with us. OK. So 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the superintendent's report. Dr. D'Andrea. Thank you. Um, so yes, you know, closing out the FY23 budget, um, it, the, the FY23 budget, Kristen and I coming in knew, um, and we were kind of presented with the budget that our understanding was $750,000 in deficit or was going to, was $750,000 short. Um, and uh, she has done a masterful job of managing that budget to get us to where we are today. So just, I want to say thank you to her. Um, and I just got a message that this meeting ends in 10 minutes. And I don't know why that is, because I put it in for two hours. So we got to move. We're, we're, <laughs> we're right on target for that. sorry about that. <laughs> right on um, okay. So that being said, um, in my uh, superintendent's newsletter, a list of payroll and bill warrants that I ask for your approval. So moved. Second. All right, uh, we have a roll call vote. Jeff? Yes. Joyce? Yes. April? Yes. And myself, yes, four zero. Is that it, Dr. DeAndrea? Uh, we have one more, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Um, so the, our, in your packet, you should have had a copy of, uh, the discriminatory harassment policy. The first paragraph lists the, uh, the protected groups, uh, legally protected 
uh, groups. And recently, um, actually, I'll tell you exactly when, July 26, 2022, actually, Governor Baker uh, signed into law in Massachusetts, creating a respectful and open world of uh, for natural hair called the Crown Act, uh, which um, classifies hair texture and hairstyle as a protected class. So we thought that be, just to be consistent and align with our past practice of having that listed in this policy in the in the um, first paragraph that we would add hair texture or hairstyle to the list of uh, protected groups. So I ask for your consideration. Uh, there's not a, any sense of urgency to do this, but this was something that was recommended by um, the town, uh, uh, Doreen, um, England, and um, it makes sense based on, on what we've done in the past. Can I ask a quick question? By us, voting, by us voting on it tonight, obviously, this makes sure that, it, that this most updated version goes into the handbooks that will get passed out at the beginning of the school year, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to accept this so new policy language? Okay, so moved and second. Have a second. Second, Jeff, thank you. Roll call, Jeff? Yes. Joyce? Yes. April? Yes. Myself, yes, four to zero. Thank you. Thank you Andrea, uh, does anyone have any other business? I would remind all that uh, maybe Jamie or Matt, I don't have the date in front of me. Is April 3rd, August 3rd our next workshop meeting or is it the 5th, the 3rd? 3rd. Okay, so on the 3rd, we have a workshop meeting where we'll discuss the superintendent's evaluation. I'd also like to look at our protocols that we agreed to at the beginning of la last year and we'll discuss what other areas we might wanna focus on for the upcoming school year. So that'll be August 3rd, workshop meeting. And that brings us to item number nine. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, uh, roll call, I mean, uh, roll call vote. Jeff? Yes. Joyce? Yes. April? Yes. Myself, yes, uh, four zero, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Appreciate it. Bye.